You're just kind of oh, protocols to make them think twice. Rooney with three. A second one. Yeah, sure. on feet. Oh, and he gets the ace. And C9 manages to answer back, winning EG's map pick on Sunset, forcing us to a split for map number three. I, I got to say, though, really, we talked about it on the half, but there was just so much, so many positives to pull away from C9 here. It, yeah. it did genuinely feel like a team that learned from their mistakes in, in map one and were more aware and more ahead of what EG wanted to try and execute on map two. Yeah, it really felt like they had a very good understanding of what Cloud, or of what EG were trying to do. They adjusted ahead of it when, you know, we saw so many times Potter would call a timeout. Oftentimes, they yeah. went around, they went two rounds off of that. Wasn't really the case this time around, and, you know, now, obviously, it helps when you've got your your star duelist just destroying uh, anything that EG was trying to do. I think he put up, what, 32, 30 something Some, ridiculous. Something. So we'll like see that. it in a little bit. You could make the argument that he was a breath of fresh air. Oh. Like oxygen, perhaps? Yeah, perhaps. Oh, you clever perhaps. devils. Uh, well, no, let's go ahead, though, and just I, I cover the overall general highlights from this one because there really were, it, it was just like the Oxy show for a good chunk of it, Shazam. Uh, but also, you know, all of C9 at certain moments contributing, right, and setting up Oxy for those plays so that he can be that breath of fresh air we know him. To be. No, definitely. Um, C9 seemed really aware, really well aware of EG's attempt at like aggressing A, their yeah. trap plays, and you could tell like Vanity was lurking Oof. in the tiles, tucking into the corners, waiting for Jaw to get aggressive down mid, looking for Apoc to get down mid and pick him off. So it seemed like they had a good understanding of how EG wanted to approach the match and how to counter it. I think it was important that he took a deep breath. After okay, the first. enough's enough. Get out. Get out. Right. You're done in a second. Well, <laughs> I couldn't even finish this. <laughs> Why <Aww>. though? As, <laughs> as we get ready for this, I mean, you're, you're just off the goof, dude. Yeah. <laughs> just get dying inside. Um, we need some air. Um, okay, so <laughs> let's, though, dive into map three, though, because <clears throat> there's a lot of interesting things regarding this uh, and interesting in that they haven't really done now I don't think it's Icebox was it Icebox mm, mm, am I tripping was I it split or was it Icebox I'm pretty sure we'd be I told you not to bring the edible store today <laughs> <laughs> I didn't, I didn't <laughs> do it today <laughs> <laughs> I'm just I, I, we'll, we'll, we'll I get don't know what that it. is yeah it's either split I'm, or I'm it's Icebox sure it's split. I'm pretty sure we're being we're being fed false news let's, let's, being let's prep both well let's find out hold on about that they're on that looks like split to me so what I'm looking for on this map on split it wasn't my fault this time. <laughs> what I'm looking for on split right now is the Cypher head-to-head. -head. Yeah. Moose has always performed so well on this map, on that agent. And Apoth right now is just doing whatever he wants. He's running he the really map. He really is. He's taking every single timing, and he's winning duels off. There was literally a round where they're just like, hit me, give me a paranoia. I'm just going to go yeah. mid. <laughs> he, yeah. Yeah. But on that map, he was six for two on first kills on Cypher. That's... Just crazy, and yeah, we've got the head-to-head. -head. We've seen how dominant Cypher is on this map, like a la John QT winning Madrid. I mean, it's it's just a great agent here. I think those two guys are gonna pop off. And nothing out of the ordinary here, really, that we're seeing on Split. It's about the box standard of what we come to expect on this map, Shazam. No, for sure. I'm a really big fan of this comp on Split. I think Cypher gets a lot of value. Um, the info, you're not really forced three clear areas, and what you said about Apoth is true. Like, that attack side comeback was just off the back of him. He was not afraid to take space constantly, and he was winning every first duel. I think if they carry that same energy that they had at the tail end of that game, Doug, you're looking at a potential situation here where EG could find this win, but C9 has to be feeling good after that one. Oh, yeah. I, I think all momentum is their way, and even with some of the fake comeback at the end, you can you can look past that, right? If you're Cloud9, you understand why things were going that way. It was primarily off of heroics and opening things up, like you guys mentioned, and I think you can look at those and go, we understand why that happened the way it did. That's not necessarily easy, easily uh, replicated, so you can move on from there. Yeah, well, we'll see if EG can score their first win of the stage or will Cloud9 manage to pick up their second championship point of the year? You got one last stand for both of these teams. Let's go ahead and send it back over to Mimi and Ender for the call. We're looking to be sensible here. Analysts says far too silly. And for us, nothing silly has ever happened when we cast a map three split on a Monday. No, no, wait. 
Hold nothing, wait, nothing. nothing. But this is an important one for EG especially to get that first win of stage one here. And to show that they can bounce back, right? Yes. They got trounced last week. Now, after a really tough map, map two, two as well. exactly. Now they have that chance in map three to bring it on back here in split. Apoth had a great game despite Galas there owning in the opening kills for his squad. But for Cloud9, Oxy was taking over. Some great calls from Vanity to close that one out. It all comes down to this. Map 3, split. Indeed it does. C9 are going to have to find some way of shutting down Oxy. Maybe distracting with some with marine life, something like that. We'll see. EG. Just playing for a little bit of mid, but look how fast C9 have blitzed their way into B main. Three players flashing out with the paranoia. And EG will have heard all of that. That should cue a speed up here over into mail, and it does. They're splitting fast towards heaven, looking to isolate these players in main, but Oxy's gotten quite deep. Blinded over towards hell and swinging out. He still gets a kill on Jaw. That is wild that he wins that. That's not how you shut down Oxy. Already starting it off strong. Rooney comes up. Oh, the stairs, and he gets the kill. Now grouping with his teammates. C9 got four players here. They dish out the healing in a five on three. Now getting everyone up to just about full. They're going to re-clear into heaven now. Both teams, in fact. But Nature's alone here. He's walked all the way back over towards mid. Oh, I like this. Crossfire with Apop. Oh, no yeah. No one's clearing Nature, but he only gets one kill. And if I'm a little too far away to swing, no. He finds his opportunity just in the nick of time. We'll dive back Last towards Spawn, find standing. a dink on another, but it's only him. And he's pinched by Moose and down. C9 win the round, and it comes in with a nice trade there for Moose at the end, but I have to just shout out how freakish Apoth has looked this series in the best possible way. His lurks in both games were devastating, and when you look at last game, if you look at first kills, Apoth had six in the game that he played, and he only died first twice. For context, Oxy, who had 33 kills, was five and three in those openers. This guy has been otherworldly today. Ridiculous stuff. Moose as well, though. I feel like on this, his debut as well, it's his second match now, has had a lot of these kind of late round clutch moments yep. that have been super impactful. If, if Apoth is the start of round, you know, Sentinel Supreme, Moose is the guy that closes He's it out awesome. every time. Little bit of tech pause on stage. Audio issue. Looks like they're starting it out with Vanity now. Yeah, so usually you have to put the headphones in in order to hear the things. Mm. So that's the adjustment he's going to be making. Smart edge, yeah. It's an important, it's an important one, that's for sure. Something tells me it runs a little deeper than that. Oxy's a big chiller back there. Look at that. He's Ospos. <laughs> same guy. I haven't seen him in the same room. Dropping 30 plus kills? Mm, yes. <laughs> Lying back in the chair during tech pauses? Yes. Yeah, uh, Oxy, Oxy was actually like trying to, you know, say something. I said, no, Oxy, stop thinking. Just take a quick nap. Just get ready. The second round's coming up in just a second. We need you at your peak. Looks like we're plugged back in on stage. Looks like a new in ears. Love that form. Talking back with his teammate. Same time though, EG have a little chance to, to think things over. <laughs> Don't think they've got much of an opportunity to go for a force or anything like that, but if they wanted to seriously have a consider about their economy, this would be an opportunity to do so. We're back. We're back. In ears fixed. Water, drunk, game resumed. Do you think the entire game is just going to be a slow pan reveal What's of that? the turtle? <laughs> I think so. <laughs> I think <laughs> every single one. They're getting creative with them now. Yeah. <laughs> it is. It is. And that's what the people come for. <laughs> Valorant, that's yeah, a nice bonus on the side. Pretty good game. Vanity. With his in ears working again. We'll anchor over towards B here with the stinger. A couple players from EG pressuring there. Maybe just looking to grab this orb. Think about all the things Vanity can hear now. And the shot spammed to an orb tap. But they're not even going to waste any time. Here comes the double push out. I think just off the fate of that smoke. Yeah. Four players lined up. <laughs> and I think poor nature just stuck his toes through. Yeah. Vanity. Saw a little bit. Got the read. Got the shots. 
It'll happen. There's no way Apoth, right? No. No. <laughs> He's clicking to that cam so bad, he wants someone to peek and try to break the camera. He's begging for it practically. Great timing on that volley for Rooney. It spike gets a kill. Mid. Drops that spike. They know it. The spike now going to head back over through mid. And into this A site. Tripwire destroyed. One enemy remains. All right, Cloud Nine. BG, they get their little buy now. And uh, with Mirror Comps here, it gives us a, a great case study of how these teams sort of find the, the different ways to play against each other okay. once we switch over to the other side. I think what EG are going to be banking on a ton, especially because it looks like they're investing, you know, Viper Orb, Viper Wall over towards this B site early. Is It's just about unleashing Apoth on ramp. They've actually given him the support of Jogamo a couple of times now. Uh, you can see the last round, Jogamo sort of escorted him up through ramp early on. This time, Jogamo going back into sewers to peek down into mid. But if Apoth can get up into, into ramp and break some of those Cypher pieces of utility, that'll be very important later in the game. But you can expect pretty slow rounds, typically, with these style of comps. It's all about those timings, the late round pivots, the misinformation. Cover going out. Oxy just to judge in a main there. And draw with full control towards mid. Notice how that flash pinged on the left side of the smoke there. So that was specifically to see if someone has been bedded in that corner. Because if you throw that high and wide, not so precise with the information. That was a true scouting flash from the sky. That dog coming through from the attacking side, now pressuring towards B. Apoth, yeah. he's been drawn into the trap. And that flash allows Oxy to only look that one direction. It's perfect, but EG can accelerate now into the B site. Tons of stall here, though, between Rooney and Moose on the Cypher. These two players bunker back, dodge away from the paranoia, are aware that Jaw is on the entry, but it might not even matter. Moose isolated on the site and taken down, but two players quickly up in heaven. Oxy is ready on the retake, and with only 30 seconds to plant the spike, EG have a lot of work to be done. Seconds left. 2v2 now. Some gas left on that Viper Wall. Nature will drop it, ready for the fight. C9 choose to separate. Flashes, Satchel so for Oxy. He's just walking out. Derek has no idea, and his own teammates wall means that Nature can't trade. 1v2 for him now. Oxy ready with Zeppa on the other side of the wall. They shut it down. That's a bonus round converted to C9. I'd be scared in the server up against Oxy. This guy is just pushing. Like, you remember back to the, the last couple of rounds on Sunset. He just started flying yes. in late in rounds. So confident in his own ability. And there it's a good play. Off the flash. He knows they've got to go for that stick on the plant. And the flash forced the yeah. teammate away. It gave him that angle. Good comms, good team play between Oxy and Zeppa there. But for all the credit we've given Apoth early in that round, gets drawn into the setup there, activates the lurk a little bit early, falls that judge. That's a crux of that. That's the only reason Oxy had that rifle late round to win yep. on that retake. <laughs> Again, though, I think the way Zeppa chose to flash into main was very good. Yes. And set that up so nicely. Jogmo fast. Not going to let that judge come into play this time. Instead, taking it with pace up into heaven. But look at this fight towards heaven. Cloud9 flooding back in on the eco. That is a quick little adjustment for Zeppa. And it's going to be a quick One conversion on this anti eco for C9. Oxy can get alt here if he finds his last kill. Or if he dies. <laughs> Something tells me not going to happen. Oh my lord. He's only got 40 health. Yeah, we're not going to be too much of believers. No. But honestly, like, what a gorgeous round from C9. Just refighting through there. Whenever I, I use the word refight, re aggro, all I mean is after the attacker has taken space, defense refighting into that territory. In this case, it's ramp, and you try to catch them in transition. Wow, headshots everywhere. Not enough to win the round, but enough to make C9 fear that sheriff. You define a word with the word in your definition. The dictionary is going to be very mad. <laughs> Yeah, you know, Miriam Webster in shambles. They're after you. <laughs> so a 4-0 start for C9. And Vanity's is opping again. We saw this a little treat at the end of Sunset. I actually, I really like this. 
specifically when your raise has a, a rocket. And that's what Oxy's got right now, because usually on this map, like sometimes you will see omens go for the off, but it's sure. a little bit more common to see raise take the off into that slot. So when you press tab and you see, oh, enemy raise has ultimate, that raise is never buying an operator because they're probably wanting to fight close range. If anything, they might low buy and take something like a judge sure. um, to be able to play with as a second. So when you then are in Vanity's shoes and you decide to go for that off, it gives you the ability to post that off on one side of the map. That can all of a sudden become your weak side where you only have the one player on that forward line. And then the other side can set up some kind of a trap around that raised rocket. And that is kind of an exception to how Vanity normally calls. I feel like most of the time you're watching him, he's paired up with Oxy, re-pushing, re-clearing space while they're leaving a kind of Moose as that weak side on the Cypher. But the op gives an interesting variant to those rounds where you can kind of instead use that pressure to funnel people into that operator, yeah. which makes it even more deadly. We'll see how Vanity actually chooses to play it. Because if you look at the minimap over on the B side, you've got the Ray's ult with that operator uh, in Vanity's hand. So Vanity is on the forward line here. And then I think after that, when he TPs out and EG try to blast into the site to, to, to return fire and kill him, that's where the rocket, and it's a trap play built around the up, which is really unique. EG's heading straight into it. But Jaw has just decimated Vanity, and he tries to get above the rocket. Won't succeed at his tricks this time. Oxy swings through the Viper wall. <laughs> this guy Ridiculous. Is, this guy is just different. And that's the only reason they come out ahead in that exchange. Yeah. The, the idea was very cool. It didn't work, unfortunately, because of the missed shot and the inability I mean, to teleport barely away. Even shot. To be fair, Vanity just kind of got he owned. He just got owned. Yeah, okay, fair. It happens. It happens to the best of us. Now that EG are in a disadvantage numbers-wise, though, this is where they have to start scouting forward. So a dog just ran up into mid, didn't see anything. Apoth should be quickly familiar that it's a Cypher on this side of the map. You can kind of deduce that after the, the op and the raise rocket are over towards B. So EG will eventually start rotating back into the Cypher, but none of this utility has been dealt with yet. Screen down. Cypher cam in A heaven. That hold buys a lot of time for these rotates to come over for C9. And double kill trips that Moose can spam I've off of from screens as well. <laughs> a smoke there would Both actually help him if it was possible. I yeah. And I don't think that was even the kill trip. Just, just spam to start. Uh, look at him go. Just <laughs> re peek again. And there's it's even it. still one more trip left on this side, so they know no one's pushed deep. Apoth stuck in this. No one's watching. No one looks at Apoth and he finds a kill because of it. Nature has picked one up as well. 2v2. How are they winning this round? Moose into elbow. Just running it down basically on his own there. The IGL in the clutch. Both sides have full information on their opponent. And the spike ticks in favor of Nature. Moose low on HP. Tap on the spike. He buys his time. Not falling for that one. Now the swing comes through and C9 was ready. 5 2 nil. The dominance continues. It's just Oxy again. I don't know what else to say. I mean, this guy. Yeah, the rocket is whatever. It's the, the re-swing back in here after he pulls out the gun. Fully decayed, running through that wall. Moose does a good job playing off his trips, going for the swing from screens as well to soften up EG on the attack. But that's the first five in a row now. Or C9. Hunter already used a timeout this half as well. Race. This is starting so to get towards chaos. dangerous territory already. For EG. C9 have flip-flopped their Cypher again, back over towards the B site, so... Never allowing themselves to be read by Come evil by geniuses. Jogamo's got a showstopper. How's he gonna use it? Right now, stepping back over towards B main, it looks like. Just trying to insert Superman, but there's a judge and he gets spammed trying to teleport out. All this space in mid, so hard to fight into. So Especially with the low buy. That. Just a stinger at range against Rooney. It's been somewhat of a gift, even the odds for a moment, but now Ichi's activating onto this B site. Rocket up, but there's still cages in Jaw's face. He's not really gonna be able to find value out of this ult, and Derek's all but dead in mid. As Zeppa finally finishes the job. 3v3. Only a dog for Zeppa in way of utility for this retake. Apparently as well from that flanking omen. C9 fully isolated here. Dog comes out. How much will it see? One player in hell. That is all. Napal so low on Raptor. 
But C9 have to get a move on. Paranoia doesn't connect, but Zephyr is in there regardless. The trades come in. C9 snapping around from every corner. And it's Jogamo up against Moose. 25 HP. But the clock is winding down. The clock is winding. Jaw turns around the corner and gets EG there first. A lovely clutch from Jogamo. The last man of all BG. Now I want to look at how EG have actually been setting up this attack towards the B side. That time it works, but what we've seen a few times now is the, is the Viper Orb, the lineup, being thrown pretty late. Actually, let's check this one out first. Yeah, this was a nice Red Bull clutch. EG was a monstrous here. Job playing it so nicely. <laughs> Level-headed in that one as well. Not letting themselves get carried away after that round. Once again, C9 setting up for this bit of a trap with a couple players in vent. Oxy ready to swing out of that smoke on mail too. This could turn into a trap for C9. Flash, Molly, Nade all ready to go into that orb. Oxy spots out George Mo spams and wins through the smoke. And EG are working with no space on the map right now. Apoth has not gotten aggressive towards A. EG trying to reclaim that rifle. And reset back towards A. No Cypher on this side of the map, but Vanity has been playing this very forward line with the forward smoke as well the entire time. C9 know that there's been no chance to creep up into ramp. That also means Apoth hasn't popped the cages yet. And those can allow the scale across. Cage triggered. There's that first cage. An orb the two players bunkered into sight, though. This is going to be an ordeal. And a Viper's pit committed. This comes really difficult now for EG to break through. Molly's at the feet of Vanity. 20 seconds. He's vulnerable. Just needs to buy time. EG have to get the plant down 15. They tap on the spike. Rooney is still alive in this pit, and he is making himself a problem. Super sticking. The spam not connecting, but Cloudline has found spike enough planted. kills. It's the Alamo for Superman, and it's not going well. EG just had no info to work with in that round. Gambled it all going into that A site, but really working themselves out of time. They're going to need Jaw to stay up in these rounds if they're going to have any ability to explode out. And I feel like they've just kind of been getting crushed in this mid space. Like there, yeah, it's, it's around like a smoke fading. Kind of a 50-50. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a small little thing that doesn't go your way and sort of cooks the round, but... but the thing is, it's consistently yes. those little things not going EG's way. Right. Beat up for baby. Beat up for round. not oh. making big adjustments. C9 keeping it easy. EG, it's just back into mid, back into mid. When are they going to dive onto ramp? When are they really going to pressure that A main space early? I want to credit Zeppa a lot for how C9's been calling around this one. His util has been super proactive at re-clearing into A main, flushing out Apoth, and then going back and being able to set up these bigger trap plays in mid over towards B. And Not again. Where does that even come it's from? It's just a spam through the orb. That's brutal. It is just an eager around here, but this has been happening consistently. EG goes for mid control, loses the player early, and then are just trying to hobble their way forward from a 4v5. Moving back into this Cypher site. Trying to fall down into it, but Oxy playing on such a nice angle. Gets the first kill, dodging around. I mean, it's 180s for the 3k. He's just styling on them at this point. All right. How many is he up to now? 11. 11 and 8 rounds. Not bad. Nah, he's done better. <laughs> eh. Just a, just an easy day of work for him. Hard to impress. Yeah. These shots were very nice, though. I'm actually just the best player in Valor. I don't know Sartre's why. Sorry, sorry, Francis. What? <laughs> okay. I feel like this is a really easy game to be the replay guy. Yeah, just you pick just... whatever Oxy says, play it. Yeah, watch watch his clips, you know, in in the game, and then also get his camera. Second time out in the first half for EG. Yeah, it's actually funny, you know, Oxy, the least humble Valor player of all time. <laughs> I just am the best, simply. I love it. You know it. what? Good for him. Good that for him. That rules. Yeah. Meanwhile, Zekin's like, no, no, no. I'm not. <laughs> the difference. Anyways, though, EG, the no strangers. You, you don't say that outside the server. In oh, the server, you course, say that. Of course, Mimi. I'm just... Maybe he is the best. 
Maybe he is. Maybe he's the best. We'll have to see. That's he's, a matchup. His second group stage match. Probably. EG, I mean, this is, is this the second time now that yes. Potter's called two timeouts in the same half? Yeah, I mean, I feel like it's happened a lot with this new EG. In kickoff, there was a couple moments where this had to happen as well, trying to arrest this fall. They have not shown variance in their setup, but I think they will now. They got 10 seconds to run back over towards A main, but that's going to be the pivot for them. Whether it's, you know, lurking up quickly with a couple of players or whether it is a true ramp dive with a paint shell remains to be seen. No, no way! It's ludicrous. And then now Oxy's just going to send it with the ult. Goodbye, Joel. That's just devastating. Just and the, literally a slap in the face. The problem there. is there's not that many ways to open up an attack this round on split. Down. Like, it's usually some kind of 1-3-1 one, one spread. It's very different on Sunset with that breach comp. You can do a lot of, like, early gambits into me. Yeah. It's so much harder here. <laughs> they just got two players died just through smokes from EG. That's brutal. Like, you can't even do anything about that, truly. But C9 came in after the timeout and read, okay, EG, they've been just been doing mid-defaulting, so they're probably going to walk into A. It's not that big of a surprise. Let's go for the spam on the first cycle. Yeah, I think the biggest difference is how often Cloud9 is changing the start of rounds, right? Mm -hmm. they're, they're going, setting up these mid-trap plays. They're setting up these reclears into A main. They have so much variety that EG is kind of at a loss of where to call in the early round. Look at how C9 have completely crunched in onto EG. Their every single gap is being watched. Maybe they have a chance to fight their way out. Actually, Derek has find the gap. A site is open, but Oxy's gonna be up in heaven so, so quickly. He has a nade, he has a Roomba. Something tells me the man's not gonna slow down. 10 seconds left. Or a change, planted. discipline, he'll rewrap through main. Yeah. Vanity pulling the strings on this round, bringing him to re-clear out through ramp. Vanity now spotted. They know Oxy as well coming in from ramp. Two players backside. EG have to bring the fight to C9. Spam comes in, a wide swing from them, but Oxy has slipped the net. Back into elbow. Now it's C9, the ones pinching into evil geniuses. Superman gets three on the round, and Derek is there to close. Finally, a round for EG. After another drought, they make it happen in the mid round. Remember the position we were in halfway through that round. Two EG players in spawn, enclosed on all sides, but they get this massive kill and find the pivot towards A. And they were caught in the mouse trap, right? I mean, C9 got all these spam kills oh through smokes, and then they found themselves corralled, four players around them. But Superman and Derek worked together, isolated the one, opened up that path over into A. Emmy's not happy with that, and he shouldn't be. That's a 4v2 advantage tossed away. C9 again exploring towards A main early in the round. As EG just waits for the smokes to fade and now starts to contact up. I could get crunched on here. There's a flash ready to go from Zappa. Oxy's holding this angle. And it's beautiful. The flash is second too late. Apoth loses his head, and that nade will not flush Oxy out. Cloud9 escape. EG getting torn trying. apart on these defaults. The reaction is to go quickly up in towards mail and ult into spawn. That's going to be canceled. No way you can stick that through. But C9, the rotates are so instant on split. They've got three players into B already. EG realized they can't accelerate into that site. They've allowed Derek to stick around, maybe to peek for a kill, but eventually call it back into A. Jaw, two satchels, but paranoid for Vanity. How much can he get done in backside? EG surrounding him, first shot, found Jaw there for the second, and he's gonna excel in with the ultimate. No one to really find this connection, but it buys time, buy space, but not for Derek. He's dead in heaven. It's a 3v2. Cloud9 regained the advantage, and they're ready to prevent this heaven rewrap. Now EG have to hunt Super looking for Rooney, but it's just not going to work. Jaw forced behind the smoke, and Rooney kills him through it. The way these rounds are ending is just so brutal 
for EG. C9 have completely solved the A main area of the map. Yes. And I think it's because EG refused to throw their Viper Wall on this side, right? So the difference between a Viper Wall over towards A, as opposed to the, the Cypher Cages, is the Viper Wall you can use multiple times inside the round. EG, ever since the timeout, have been popping uh, both their cages very early media and media. trying to scale off of them. So all, e all C9 are doing are putting multiple players around those cages, fighting them Fight as they go Fight. down. EG are not going to be able to make any headway into this ramp space unless they commit more utility. The lurk is never going to work for them as long as C9 continue committing players into that space. And that's such a change from the first map of this series. All the way back on Lotus, it was Apox lurks into B with just a cage, just a little bit of utility punishing. But here on Split, C9's protocols to deal with it have been real good. It also just seems like EG have not been using any of their stuff over towards B. It's always been these split B hits. I, I don't think they've really gotten a lurk in, even though they're throwing this wall constantly. And it's because they're not actually throwing like the John QT lurk orb. Usually that orb drops there, uh, but they're throwing it much deeper onto the site to block off any backside player. Sure. So you can't actually step out of main so easily. And look easily. at the setup. They're threatening with this wall up on yeah. B, but there's trips, there's a cam. There's still info there for C9 to know no one walked through, which means they have lots of players ready to go oh. to punish him mid. Look at that, Superman TP's up with the judge, but he's counter-blinded. EG can't see a damn thing in heaven. They've got the B side, but they're just running into Oxy's crosshair. Oxy gets a third on three HP, you're joking. I mean, this is his 19th showstopper of the game. <laughs> He doesn't even need to use it. It's a 5v2 anti-eco. He's got nade. Derek's dead. Oxy's on for the ace. Won't get it again. Seemingly the one thing to elude the man. But they win the round. They win it damn dominantly. Last round in the half. A quick counter flash there from Derek saves their lives up in heaven. Because it was a nice little play from EG. Again, and it's not a, a failure of a round all these times. It's just minor things happening. It's usually C9 reacting pretty effectively. But at this level, it, it is those yep. little things. One mistake, not figuring out one protocol. Mm, I wonder what he's saying. Why can't we listen to him? <laughs> Why did we press the mute button? <laughs> I wonder. EG have given up completely on that A main space. They've realized, just not going to work. And the fa flash doesn't ping anything close, so now this orb going up, they don't even have to look to their left, they just need to scout out that what camera. And they do use it to break that. I suppose that orb helps breaking that early camera, as opposed to the one you put out there in the middle. Certainly not a bad piece of utility. It'd be very effective for fast scaling out into the site. Hold on, camera what is this? Jojimo is sticking around in B main. Not looking to exec. There's an option there where maybe he looks to do some kind of a fake, but the rest of his team is already back over today. bandit has got an op in screens posted on the line. Dog doesn't have the range. Nope. But bandit doesn't have the shot. Misses his mark, will pick up the rifle. Zappa from heaven, that's great spam. Apop, again, a first death in this round. It's Vanity can be a little too bold on that flood. Leaves it 4v4, but the rocket for Oxy, that's huge. EG looking to play so far forward with it, but a showstopper out into the back of sight. Oxy gets two. C9 with Oxy on top. Nature just waiting inside of the pit. Derek helps him out, but it's all on nature, all on him, and it's not gonna happen. Oxy with three on the round, and C9 will not be stopped. The retake is beautiful for Cloud9. Double satchel over the top, circumvent the pit completely, then re-clear through main, deny the heaven reroute. It's so good. Oh. One enemy oh. remain. Just nasty. EG. 22 and 6, by the way. Yeah. In 15 rounds. I think he's having another game. 12 rounds. 10 to. I can't do This that. is looking bleak for EG, but it's not done yet. We have the halftime with GB and the analysts. Well, let me tell you, that Oxy kid, he good at the video game, ain't he? <laughs>
that's, pretty, that's, that's the hard-hitting analysis people tune in. <laughs> that's what people want to watch. I mean, look, I think everyone was excited watching that one. He was just running in sight, doing whatever he wanted to do. But you got to give love to the supporters, the people who are enabling all of this to happen here. And, and Wyatt, you know, you got to turn to Zeppa. You got to turn to to Rooney here to really be, you know, just uh, the enablers here yeah. for Oxy, right? Absolutely. I mean, you can see it in mid here they, how well these two guys too. are playing together. Yeah. yeah. This has just been an all around everyone on this team can just do nothing wrong. Every bullet that's going through a smoke is connecting with an EG player. And it's always a headshot, too. It's, it's just, just insane. <laughs> it is actually the flow state. Yeah, it truly is. It, it's actually quite absurd, too, when you look at how the series is played out. We were talking about an EG outclassing C9 in map one. And now, as we fast forward to the end of the series here, Shazam, it feels like C9 are just returning that favor. No, definitely. It's split the script from Lotus. Um, like you talked about, Zeppa is setting up Oxy towards A main. They're denying any A main lurk, any info. EGs keep trying to do this double lurk with the Viper Wall B. It's and not working. No, it doesn't give them any options later on. I think I'd rather have them do that Viper Wall on A and be able to do some sort of lurk later on because right now the early aggression is just stopping all of it. Well, it just goes to show the conversations we were having earlier after Lotus and stuff. It just goes to show we have no idea what we're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Throw it all away. You know, I think that when someone like Oxy shows up and just pops off, it's hard to, to to break it down, you know, because he's just pounding. That's yeah. all he's doing. I mean, the kid's walking on air. <laughs> he really is. No, no, <laughs> no, wait a minute. No, I cannot enable these these, these these slanderous jokes. How could you? No, but honestly, man, Oxy just seems like it, the unstoppable force right now, and somehow, some way, EG's got to try and find a way to stop him. I don't know if they can. Let's send it back. Thanks, I guess, GB. Yeah, I guess. No more jokes, please. No more jokes. Just, I don't know why I'm giving... Uh, that was Doug's fault. That was Doug's fault, Jimmy, yeah. I'm just used to him being the You're bad giving joke him a raw guy. deal. Sorry, Jimmy. Not chill. Okay. Didn't deserve it. Back Last to stand. Oxy uh, watching simulator. Uh, Oxy's been given this ghost. Was allowed to purchase light armor and a couple of satchels. A little raid boss action. Gotta love that. Bit of a trap in mid set up here. Once the smoke falls... And the hero yeah. noise close. It'll be a nade, a dog, and then Jarjimo ready to fight off of it. EG simply must win this. There goes Jarjimo out on the track, but C9 have backed away. They've dodged away the mid-aggression effectively, and that's something EG never managed to do in the first half. That's so much util gone early in this pistol round. And you see, this is that John QT setup. Yep that threatens that lurk a lot more. You can get really close and then pop through that smoke. Puts a lot of pressure, makes you need two pairs of eyes watching both edges of those smokes. Now the wall goes up, trip is broken, wall down, and C9 are already in the back site. So now it's a retake, and Ichi have no initiator utility. They're just flooding into their deck. Like planted. Only two left. It's gotta be nature. He was so great for EG in their losses last week. Putting up insane numbers. Here. And as the push comes now into Derek. Two Team players watching him. Nature caught Andrew. walking out. Team C9. Ace. Don't even blink. The way they're playing that post fun. Ready to disrupt the retake, fighting forward. That those are the fundamentals that we see from all of the best teams. You cannot sit back, let yourself get ran over by initiator utility. If you stall that first wave against the solo Skycom, you basically win the round at that point. And they did exactly that. But even then, they're still proactive. They still have an X layer repositioning yep. completely on site. It's so clean. There's no slowing down now in this game for yes, Evil Geniuses. Hide armor stingers on everyone. Oh, Looks like they've got spot. most of their utility. This buy could be a lot worse for them. But it's still not going to be easy. Not with long-range guns for C9. You'd think their best Shadows. bet would be looking for another option to look for a trap play. Something similar. Instead, it's to fall pretty heavily out of that mid-space. Reposition back over towards P. Bunker in on that B site. EG need a hero. Could it be Jojmo? He's got the nade, a stinger. 
Dog actually re-clears mid right now. Evil geniuses know that space is open and they're fully focused on D-Main. Good timing of that Molly. Stalls out the hit from C9 and they're out. They're definitely anticipating the stack on this side. Uh, the issue though for C9 is they never had a lurk towards A, so they have no info on this side of the map. True. Just two players and a trip ready to go. EG heard three players over towards B, but already left. Derek has repositioned up into A heaven. This could be a winning position for EG. The crux of the round is Superman on site. He has a trip to play off of. Paranoia. Paranoia to delay. Oxy getting ahead of it. Just diving all the way through. Disrupting the player close. Super gets one. Ten okay. seconds. Plant needs to come down, but C9 have already picked up two. They Ten have sight. Spike yeah. will be planted. And now the gun advantage. Massive for C9. Three stingers for EG. Apoth looking for it quickly, but there's not enough bullets in these things to kill four players. Oxy gets the first, Oxy gets the second, and Apoth is not long for this world. That's four in the round for him. And C9 on match point. Oxy is just destroying. Pretty rare you get to see that trophy. Jojimo, he's the guy who won that. But this time... It is all about the youngster. Let's go. Come on. One more, one more, one more. One That's more. my dog. Hey, I'm buying hey. you dinner. I'm buying you dinner tonight. Deserved. 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 Yep. What do you think he's getting? I don't know. It's got to be some like Michelin level. Yeah. This is a carry and a half. He's having his off bus game. Get in the backpack, guys. Apoth and Derek playing close together here. Derek gets the first with the Sheriff, but is instantly traded out. Good work from Apoth, though. EG are not out of it just yet, but the Flood is going to persist into the Cypher. Nowhere for Apoth to run. He's got to fight his way out of this, and he manages to do it. Three kills for him. EG aren't giving up. So moves the last man standing. He's shut down, too. Great round out of Apoth there, but it's, it, it's 12 to 3. That it is. We talked about a nearly impossible comeback on game two. And that was what, a 12 to a six? Yeah, it, it, mm. it started at what, I think 11 to six. You would need nine in a row. It's not looking good, no. that's for sure. But you know what? It's not a fake comeback until it's a fake comeback. Actually, EG's worst at nemesis is the eco round. Something tells me Cloud9 wins this round. Oxy, hero rifle, one off the showstopper. That is a scary prospect. Losing two games to the eco would not be a good look for EG. No rounds easy when you're on a comeback. See that sort of taking their time right now. All things considered. Dog into vents, realizing, oh, no trap set up. Maybe we can scale up a little bit more right here. Foxy gets a kill. That Man. is showstopper territory. They still haven't showed this rifle. Oxy intentionally using the classic there to break the dog instead. Crazy how Oxy is always getting a buy on their eco rounds. I love it, honestly. Yeah? When someone's flying that well, let him shine. Shows how much the team believes in him. Hold on a second. Jogamo, I was wondering if he was going to go down the rope as he went for a little peek. Said it's Oxy, flashed off the angle. Stuck behind the wall for now. Good Molly to keep C9 stuck in this space, but they may have found an opportunity. Over rotate from EG leaves Apoth isolated once again on A. But Jaws is satcheling to get back to site in time. He's now posted on this cross and actually flooding into elbow. That's a danger man dead. Good work from EG. They've kept control of this round. Last player standing. Nicely done. I love that fast rotate from Jaw. I love Real. the way he uses his satchel, because a lot of times it's the really impressive stuff, but also the, the little things, those fast rotates, uh, kind of timing a weird swing when you're going for a double yeah. swing. And he realizes they're not trying to play retake there. It's low on the clock, and yeah. C9 only have things to gain by trading one for one on that side with Apoth. Yeah. They can pick up that gun, so that's why he's getting so quickly over to support his Sentinel yeah, player. Yeah, you really want to avoid having to play a retake against those light pike guns, because Stinger's close range, those can yep. shred. 100%. Flawless round there. But this is where it gets scary. Seekers, Rocket, 
Cloud9 one away from the win. Those Seekers making the Rocket a honing missile. Superman TP's over the corner. He's been going for this last few rounds. C9 will have heard it with their mid defaulting. But again, if they pop Seekers into this one, it'll completely reveal this man. O yeah. Oxy's walking oh my through the god. Oh my god. Bold call there. But it's only one for one. Worth. Oxy is down. EG fans take a big sigh of relief. Round's not over though. Jaw on this site. Cloud nine. Looking to time this re-hit. Yeah, no omen smokes for EG. Make it harder to stall out this choke. Actually re-clearing into mid right now and not seeing okay. anything. So Jaw is fully primed and ready for the fight that is about to come. Three players here. They called the lurk back over. Jaw swings for a re-clear, sees nothing, but they know players are there. That was the last flash Derek had. No dog either. EG are playing guns only from here on out. If Cloud9 get into a post plant, the game might be over. EG needs to stay ahead of this one. Be willing to just take some fights. C9 are gonna look for a delayed B split. Heavy into mail with three players. Seekers to guide them in, but actually it's a ruse. Down into the vents with 20 seconds left, but the Cypher camera sees everything. EG are fully aware. Same scenario as the last round, but this time Jaw is far away. Ape off on the site. He has been the best player for EG, but he's down. They're shooting his body. Cloud9 trying to close this one out. The plant committed. Jaw gone nature. What can you do? Nothing. Cloud9. Pick up their second win of the season in dominant fashion. C9 shocked everyone beating Leviathan last week. And there was questions. Was that a fluke? Was that left flying pad? And EG, maybe not in the best form in these last two maps, but I think Cloud9 really proving that they are a team who can contend. There was some clean stuff today. Yeah. Oxy was insane. The individual play from Oxy, unreal, of course, but also, especially in game number two, the mid-round calling, the adaptability of Cloud9 was really nice. And that's the type of stuff that makes me get a lot more confidence in a team when it's not just the pop-off player, but you can see all the ideas working so beautifully in tandem with it. Yeah, I love the way that Zeta and Oxy are kind of meshing together as well on that sky. Right, supportive utility for that rookie. We had some Rooney Sheriff rounds. Got out. We had some Andy Bucky rounds. <laughs> all the signature guns coming into play here today for the 2-1. I wonder what he's gonna get for dinner. I, that's a, that's a great interview question. I don't know if he's the one who gets to gets to talk to us after the game, but I've got to know. I love the vibe of this team, right? Every round, Oxy's winning. You see him screaming, yelling yeah. at this team. Like they're up there having fun every time they're playing. They absolutely are. They're gonna be very happy after the start to this stage. Maybe everyone having fun, but Amy. Yeah. But you know what? But you're the coach. He's not in fine. server. Like, coaches, their job is to be miserable. <laughs> <laughs> He's not wrong. <laughs> <laughs> and then lift the team up. But uh, hard, hard to have, a, have a, a frown on your face after a performance like this. And I mean, man, this does not bode too well for EG. No. Couple games in a row now where, you know, you see some really good ideas and then it just slips away. It, it really reminds me of like beginning of last year EG. Jaw even tweeted that after their last game. True. And it almost feels like starting again, right? And, and you've got the moments to hang on to, right? Like Apoc's lurking was ridiculous on the first two maps. Third map got super found and out. And Jaw was way better than last game. Yeah. But at the same time, this is now an EG that in a couple of games have lost early and lost big and not found an ability to show any sort of fight back. And that is going to be something that's going to be a big challenge from a big hurdle to come over is can they adapt in a game where everything is dying? And remember, this is a very short season. Five weeks, they're starting 0-2. If they want to hopes of making playoffs, much less contending for Shanghai, you have to win out and from here. And it's a every tough single series, schedule. every single series, that's a championship point to be won or lost for that late qualification down but the road. For Cloud Nine, they've already got two. Their second win of the season is out of the way. For now, though, Doug standing by with your Verizon post match interview. Thank you so much, Mimi. I'm standing by with Rooney after a complete obliteration uh, of EG. I, I want to ask you this, man. Last weekend's match against Leviathan felt uh, notably more labored, right? You guys go super long on a set. This was far from that. What was the biggest focus this week of practice leading into this match? 
Uh, I'd say we're super confident as a team, so we just need to have, play our own game and have fun. Uh, when we're having fun, it's, it's pretty simple for us. So as long as we're doing that, it's, it's not a big deal. And uh, we just got to figure out what's going on in map one for us. Or, or maybe we just shouldn't pick any maps anymore. Just let them pick all three. What, was there something about Lotus in particular that you felt like was uh, uh, maybe a, something obvious that needs to be adjusted or something like that? Or was it really just like, yeah, we kind of lost. We got a little rolled. Let's just GG go next. Um, nothing like to the next map, but I mean, we were clutching, we were shooting, like things felt good. We just threw the little things and that's what made us lose. So we just, you know, talk about the little things and go next and it worked. Yeah, I think when you, you think about Valorant of this caliber, it is those little things that come together. It's funny watching your career so far. One of the little things that you do so exceptionally well is manage to get multiple kills in eco rounds. Your sheriff has uh, become renowned in a lot of ways. What do you feel like is, is the biggest contributor to that? Is it people are setting you up or is it just Rooney being Rooney? It's actually, I'd say the opposite. I like when they, when we're on eco rounds, when teams are on eco rounds, they usually have a, li a little bit more freedom. You know, if we lose this round, you know, it's an eco, no sure. big deal. Yeah. So I kind of just do extra. And, I, and if I'm alone, I'm always confident. So if I make a mistake, who cares? I'm just going to peek you and see what happens, you know? Those those potential mistakes often turn into 3Ks and, and things like that. Last question I have for you. Oxy popped off, right? I don't know how many kills he got. It was a lot. Uh, we, heard, we overheard you saying you were going to take him to dinner. And honestly, it's the least you could do. Where are you taking him, though? Oh, I don't think he wants anything but McDonald's. I'll be honest. <laughs> uh, breakfast, dinner, everything, that's all he wants. You know, that's the scrim oxy. That's 30, 30 kills every game, like no matter what. So we need to figure out how to make him do it on stage. And today he did a map two and map three. So if we figure that out, we're untouchable. The kid was nuts. You guys looked awesome. You played exceptionally well as well. Congratulations on the big win. We're actually going to throw it down to the analyst desk. We're going to recap today. We're going to recap the weekend. And we're also going to talk a little challengers. Thank you so much for that, Doug. We're joined by Van Silly here, who's going to be on some some analytical duty. Uh, also, I was not ready for that. Can we just talk about the fact real quick? McDonald's on uh, for the for the win. That's just oh, kids these days. You know, is that <laughs> is that why he's always smiling? Because he's having no stop it happy meals. No, mm, <laughs> another no. Throw one, throw one at him. Throw, him. throw it. Are you sure him. you guys want to be here? Hit him. <laughs> That's only 50 damage. That's only 50 damage. I'm still here. I'm still here. Oh, man. Oh, geez, Louise. I mean, overall, though, I mean, uh, C9, Shazam just look absolutely awesome coming out of those last two maps. And I think, you know, Rooney said, he's like, yeah, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll see what happened in map one. But there's a lot of positives to take away from the C9 roster right now. No, definitely. Um, Lotus had me a little worried on my prediction, but Oxy stocks are high. Looks like they just cleaned up their game. Honestly, they looked extremely good. Yeah, they just they just let the kid just slay. It was yeah. beautiful to watch, Wyatt. Yeah, week two of seeing this roster swap that they made between kickoff and the regular season, how much firepower it yeah. added to the team, genuinely. I mean, yeah, Moose and Rooney are really rounding this yeah. thing out. Yeah. I, I truly believe Moose has been one of the most underrated NA players since – I mean, genuinely, ages for, ago. Yeah. forever. I mean, I even remember him, like, with LG putting up good numbers <laughs> against you on set of, like, 2021. Like, all the way back then. <laughs> that is a super throwback. Yeah, I, I, I think he's been finally given an opportunity here to prove that he's, like, a legit tier one player. Yeah. yeah. And, and just to piggyback on that, too, I think also it adds a lot of voice to C9 as well. Yeah. Just because he had the IGL experience as that previous roster for C9. So having, like, that extra voice to help Vanity out, to call those mid rounds, also playing initiator roles, and he plays it super well. And as he mentioned in the interview with Doug, like, when he comes down to those moments where he's on an eco, he needs to get stuff done, even on pistol round, he pulls out a sheriff and still does damage with it, too. So it yeah. really adds a lot, not only into, like, the, the full gun round firepower, but those swing rounds that you could get, you know? You you're, li yeah. you're looking at that sunset round. Like, they won that last round on Eco. Yeah. And that was Rooney getting one of them, uh, get, killing the Lurker yeah, with the Sheriff, too. So, with the Sheriff, bro. Kid, kids out there just, <laughs> yeah, just going for it. Uh, but you know what, though? You guys mentioned Moose. You, you talk about all of these new faces. Mm. Well, good news is, is that we got plenty more Valorant coming at you this week because things are heating up big time in Challengers. And here are the current standings of where we are right now. Uh, you got Moist Shopify and Oxygen popping off. And then you have M80 and Turtle Troop holding it down in the one and two over at Group B.
Uh, Vansilia, you've been commentating, you know, a lot of the Challengers games. It, it feels like, you know, we're just seeing, and, and it's a lot of familiar faces as well. People that I was commentating <laughs> when I first started covering Valorant, which is really cool. Exactly. Somehow they just came out of the woodworks and coming back here in 2024 and playing in Challengers for Stage 1. And it's actually pretty, it's pretty nice to see, like, the competition level that we have uh, currently for Challengers. Yes, it may seem uh, at that point that you want to focus on M80, Oxygen, MXS. I mean, M80, it was that team that almost should have ascended when they played yeah. against the Garden at finals and lost. Like, even that season last year, they, they weren't dropping series at all. They were the team to beat and unfortunately couldn't close it out. And when they went through roster changes, at least with BCJ coming now into the roster, you have a new IGL with Nitro coming back, and it, it works yeah. out pretty well overall for this team still. They, they, they still haven't skipped a beat. Yeah, no, we got a lot of uh, familiar names you probably have seen if you've been watching Valorant for a long time. Guys like Will and Neptune, right? Yeah. Kepeki as well on the yeah. other side there. You know, like Dapper playing too, right? There are a yeah. lot of faces that people know. And, I mean, you, you, you yeah, know Dapper quite well, Jack, actually. Sure. Yeah, no, he's he's been grinding, man. We we worked very hard for a couple of years, and I'm sure he's feeling similar to me, where we really feel like we must have missed out on playing in partnership. Um, so I know he's been working very hard, and uh, I hope he finds success with Oxygen. I'm going to be rooting for them. Yeah, it does feel like it's, uh, you know, a lot of these teams, and we're seeing them come into uh, the league of G2, right, primarily uh, coming from Ascension. All these teams are trying to play, trying to get to this point right here where we are in the VCT, Wyatt. And I think that it, it's been an exciting overall challenger season, especially with the amount of names that have been participating. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I wanted to ask you in particular because you were playing against the duo of Verno and Redux who've been mm -hmm. getting a lot of hype because they're, they're both on oxygen with Dapper. Two players that I know teams in partnership are mm -hmm. wanting to get. They're just not eligible right now because they're too young but can you kind of speak to like some of the guys like those two that you were playing against uh, last year yeah challengers last year was extremely stacked um there are a lot of good players and a lot of good teams uh, especially like redux and verno you know there are people like you might do the strat right play the round right catch them out of position and they'll still get away with the round you know they'll still win the duels or take off like an impossible fight mm. um and that's like the kind of talent that deserves to be in partnership that actually reminds me of like one of the games where Redux is, was playing in Mo, uh, against Mata, sorry, for MXS, and he was just dodging rockets every single time. Like, you, when you need a speed demon that's just going to be dodging everything, hitting W, kind of like what we're seeing from Oxy today, he's definitely the, the, the next to look out for. And I wouldn't be surprised if he gets scattered out, or unless OXG could actually just move up together as a group, that'd be hey, kind of nice to see too. That would be really cool. And, you know, again, if you're a big fan of Valorant, there's just no reason for you not to be watching those Challengers games. You get, you know, some of the familiar faces that you've come to know and love in the VCT calling the games. Wyatt's commentating, Woo! Yeah. right? Oh you know? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, that comment after our Ric Flair moment for Vance. No, but that is I mean, I'm super excited. So excited. So excited. He got the pink on, the on too. He just gave him a little fluffs and all that. Yeah, we're not going to stand up and do it. But yeah, <laughs> yeah. Vance and I both. Yep. Yeah. I think yeah. I'm all on like Wednesday. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Wednesday is it? Every yeah, Wednesday. Yeah. Yeah. On Thursday. Yeah, so, Wednesday. Yeah. Wednesday. This is Saturday. the last week of the regular season, the first stage of the regular season. So a good time to check it out. That's yeah. right. No better time than now to go and enjoy some challengers. So with week two coming to a close, let's go ahead and take a gander over at our Alpha and Omega standings as EG, unfortunately, with that 0-2, will find themselves in fifth. Meanwhile, C9 got that 1-1. One, one. Uh, actually, uh, C9, are they 1-1? One, one? No, they're two. Yeah, they're two and zero right now. They're two and zero right now. Yeah, they're two and zero right now. Yeah, edibles. Yeah, you need to stop. You're getting me in trouble, dang it. Kidding, kidding. Comedy. Oh my God. That's all right. It's the post show. Yeah, it's it's all good. Yeah, it's all good. But yeah, so of course, uh, we'll get that updated, but you can find all the information over on our socials and as well as, you know, checking out like the game. You can literally just go to the game yeah. and check out Come all here. of the results and all the, you know, the things there. And you can even pick up some of the capsules for your favorite teams. So now with that being said, we got to talk about what's coming up next because it's super week, which means five straight days of magic. Matches. On Saturday, we got Sentinels MIVR, and then we got Cloud9 Loud, and on Sunday, we got Crew and AG, then we got NRG and Leviathan, then on Monday, we got G2 and Fluria, then we got Cloud9 versus 100 Thieves, they're coming back again for another go, then we got I'm Sentinels EG, NRG MIVR, followed by G2, Leviathan, and then Crew and Loud. Who wins that race? What? Which race? It just sounded like you're 
commentating a, a horse race. Yeah, I'll say, it's I'll give it pretty I'll awesome. Give it to loud, you yeah. know, I like loud. Yeah. Yeah. They're bouncing back. Yeah, you know what? I'm, I'm actually excited to see loud this week. I, I think, I think they needed the week off. Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. I think yeah. Sadek's been cooking. <laughs> he's, been, he's been in the lab. He's been theory crafting. I think he's got some cool stuff coming up. But overall, though, an exciting week. We got uh, two big matches. We got Sentinels versus MIBR. We got C9 versus Loud. And then, of course, I, I mean, Crew versus EG and NRG Lev, I think, is... Energy Lev, for Energy sure, Lev man. is going to be very exciting to see that's how that... That's a banger. You got a prediction for us there, Shazam? Dude, it's it's cool to see Lev start to figure it out. And yeah. so I'm really excited about the matchup, but I still think energy is going to take it. I think they've looked solid throughout, and they're just only going to build up. Yeah, yeah. I did get word, by the way. We got the standings again <laughs> this time around with the correct numbers. Look at C9 go. That's their number three now with 2-0. Uh, but not bad there uh, for Cloud9. A good day's work for them. I'm going to tell you, GB, I am so crouped up after this week. Are I'm, you that crouped? Yeah, I think they're going to go crazy. In they're going to go week. cruisy? Yes. <laughs> no, Dude, I love this, this I, post show, man. This is this, this is my vibe. <laughs> ben, so you got the crew pink on. Are you with I'm our, I'm already I'm already on the crew for sure. I mean, yeah. especially when we had that interview with. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! There you go. Don't do I'm the twirl. Up, I'm just showing out the crew colors. What can I say, man? I yeah, when they're not it. playing today. <laughs> Show them. Because you know what? Next week, I mean, I'm already I'm already hyped up about it as well. Because I mean, even when Kesnet had here, he yeah. was talking about it. He was like, "Well, I'm actually my demons. I've been fighting my demons. It's not about me anymore. Yeah. It's about how I could be a team player." And it shows. I mean, this is awesome. Speaking, this is speaking not of as demons, awesome as this, though, right? That that just that's demon. Look at your face in that too. It's actually <laughs> amazing. It's like you're just nah, so much. Nah. Could, Vance, I will join you. Can we Hell do yeah, a let's twirl? Do it Can we do so a dumb. twirl to close out the show right now? I would love to. Is that is that something you like to do? <sighs> actually, I like all. All four of you guys are joining me for a twirl. Dude, if Come you, on. I'm Come on. You're twirling at the same time. I got a whole battery pack, so I got to crack so yeah. a full one. Yeah, no, I mean, listen, yeah, yeah, I don't know if our knees are going to make with, it, but we're going to try. Thickness. In any case, you guys, guys thank new. you so much. Big thank you to Shazam, who came yes, and hopped for a great weekend. We thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next week. Three, two, one. Hit it. Bye, everybody.